sit still. Avoiding all movements of body. In order to attain in us that stillness of the mind, the silence of the heart, where alone we hear clearly the quiet and small voice of God. God meets us where we are and leads us to where he wants us to go with him. Whatever be our situation, our circumstance, the problems that we may face, nothing is so small that we cannot take it to God. And nothing is ever too big for him to solve. Having listened to the sharings from some of our sisters, we now pray with them and pray for them. The prayer of Hildegard. And as you sit erect with both the feet on your ground, a reminder that we are grounding ourselves in God. I invite you to pray in your heart the prayer of Hildegard. And yet I raise my hands aloft to God that I might be held by God just like a feather which has no weight of its own but allows itself to be carried by the wind. And that's the prayer of Mary. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to your word. The response of Malachi, the prophet, Behold, I come to do your will. The prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, let your will be done. And so raising our problems to God, we pray once again the prayer of Hildegard. And yet, I raise my hands aloft to God, that I might be held by God, just like a feather, which has no weight of its own, but allows itself to be carried by the wind. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. During the break, uh, Clarita was telling me how you were trying to find a speaker from the Immaculate Heart of Mary Radio. And that speaker was not available. And then they looked for some other priest. He turned on the offer. And then they went for somebody else they couldn't get. So it makes me feel very good to know I <laughs> God chooses what is foolish to shame the wise. Or as I tell my friends, if you don't get the horse, use the ass. <laughs> Well, we are where we need to be, and providence is where we are, and God is with us all the time. Amen. As we were looking at the Jesus that we celebrate in Christmas, and tried to glean for ourselves the image of God who comes in poverty, 
who binds himself in a relationship, who reveals himself to the lowly and the poor, and who gives himself away as food for our nourishment, and finally would lay down his life for his friends. I would also like to discuss with you a little parable that we find in the Gospel according to St. Luke. Throw a number at me. Chapter? 12. Thank you. Plus 3, 15. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from St. Luke. The prefix to this parable is very important. I'll explain or let you know why. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So to them he spoke this parable. A man had two sons. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That's the shortest gospel you heard, right? <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that's the good news. Just that one verse. A man had two sons. All that we need to learn about our God, all that we need to know about our faith, and everything that we need to know about our spirituality is all contained in that one verse, five words. A man had two sons. Notice that it's about a relationship. It's about a family. It's about communion. It's about being at home with one another. All that we are saying is relationship. A man had two sons. Has it ever occurred to you that our God is one, but he is not alone because he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our God is a family of persons. Our God is a communion. Our God is a relationship, a constant going back and forth. One being with the other, one for the other, one into the other. Three persons and one God. How do you put them together? That's why I say one with the other, one into the other, and one for the other. You know, our relig religion is actually a relationship. I don't know if you can see from here. The back of my car has got a little <coughs> sticker. A friend of mine insisted that he put a sticker there. I said, no, I don't like it. Uh, he said, then he said, you need to say something. I want to come up with a sticker and said, okay, I said, it's not a religion, but a relationship. Mm -hmm. Because I'm convinced that our religion is a relationship. How many times do you make the sign of the cross? So many times. So many times. And how many times do you make it prayerfully? <laughs> this was being bad. You know, when you make the sign of the cross, you know what you're doing? You are actually naming a relationship. And you say, in the name of the Father, how can there be a father if there is no son? And how can there be a father and a son if there is no good spirit between them? And that is why a man had two sons that contains all of it. In fact, 
This parable is about a relationship. How it was, how it was lost, how it was restored. Or Milton would say, paradise lost, paradise gained. Gain. Thank you, I just forgot the second part. <laughs> <laughs> how about pausing with that relationship for a little while? See, the father is into the sons, the younger son and the elder son. And let's take a, a moment and take a stab at each of their relationships. The younger son goes to the father and says, Father, give me here and now my share of the property that comes to me. Father, give me my share of the property that comes to me. In that one sentence, he refers to himself three times. Give me, here and now, right away. Mine, 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 right? You know, what is that movie? I think it's Nemo. Or those birds will be shouting, mine. If you have a two-year-old, you know what I mean. Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> And notice what the father does. He takes a property and gives it to them. Take and go. You know, this has been the problem of us, of human race, right from Adam and Eve. God made all things for us and made us for himself. And God knew that he wanted to pass it on to us. You know, God owns all things and he possesses nothing. That's what makes him God. God owns all things, but possesses nothing. Everything belongs to God, but he doesn't care for it, meaning he's not attached to it. And so he takes, yeah, you know, son, this is what I had for you all along. Take and go. And the son goes away. And when you walk away from the father, what are you walking away from? Life, love, safety, security, honor, respect, power. You're walking away from it all. And naturally, what happens? A famine comes about. This son was so much worried about himself. He wanted to have it all. He wanted to make money. He wanted to be someone, something. And then what happens, when you walk away from the circle of your father's love, you lose it all. And there is a famine, scarcity. And notice what happens. He has nothing to eat, he's starving. And that is very, very uh, a loaded statement. He doesn't come alive. He's not nourished. He's not fed. He's not healthy. He's not happy. He's not wholesome. And then he does something that no Jew of that era would think of. He goes to a man and hires himself out. <coughs> he becomes a servant. And what does he look after? His face. face. Unclean. And he becomes an untouchable. He cannot enter the temple. He cannot be part of a community. He cannot give praise to God according to the Jewish belief of that time. And so he is reduced to nothing. From being an heir, he becomes a son who owns things, takes away, and he goes away, he loses that humanity, being with the animals, and he doesn't even get the pots which the pigs eat because nobody gives them. And then, he comes to his senses. Not because he loves his dad, but because he has hit the rock bottom. You know, in AAA they say, when you hit the rock bottom, that's good news. Because nothing worse can happen to you. <laughs> and then it is all rising. And that's what happens to this guy. He comes to his senses and says what he says. And notice this guy, he's really a shrewd guy. I'm not saying he's intelligent, he's shrewd. He's a manipulator. He says, how many of my father's hired servants have more than what they need to eat? 
and here I am starving. Come on, wake up, my man. Get up and go to your father. You know that your father loves you. Work on that emotions. A little bit of blackmailing. <laughs> That's what he does. <coughs> Think of your grandchildren. When you're about to kick them, they come and kiss you. <laughs> and so he says, I'll go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Treat me as you were one of your hired servants. Will any father, in his senses, <laughs> or in his respect, treat a son as a hired servant. So the son knows the script and he writes it. And then he comes to the father. You know what is the sin of the son? The younger son? It's not that he just disrespects. For me, the problem with the son is his concept of relationship. He thinks that by working for the father, by being like one of the hired servants, fulfilling all the orders, doing all the work, he can earn the love of his father. And then the father will look upon me and say, well done, my son, you worked hard. Now from now on, I will love you. Do you agree with that concept? Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet, how often you say, if I go for my Sunday Mass without faith, full Mass, however bad the first sing hymn is, or however boring the last hymn is, I'm going to stay there. <laughs> if I stay for the full Mass, and when the collection comes, if I throw in a few dollars, and make my confession and receive communion, then God will love me. And so what are you trying to do? Earn the love of your father and mother God. That has been the Christian notion for so long that you can earn the love of God. That's a language of commerce. It is barter system. I do this, you do this. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. That's not what grace is. How many of you can make yourself worthy for God's love? And yet, how many times our church uses that so that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ? Angelus, next time you listen to the prayer, when the priest says, let us pray, listen to that, or the Eucharistic prayer. How many times there is that language of commerce, of economics, of finance, of trying to earn the love of God by doing good works. That's a mistake of the younger son. There is another guy in the house. He goes to his father. And notice what happens. When he comes back, I'm trying to skip a few verses. When he comes home, he hears the sound of music and dancing. And then, he doesn't want to go into the house. <coughs> Come on. If you are going to the house and there is parting, what would you do? Join you would the rush into the house and say what your teenage son or grandson is up to. Right? <laughs> but you would want to join the fun. But this guy stays out. When he learns and calls one of the workers. Hey, what's happening there? And the worker would say, excuse me? You mean your house? <laughs> your dad? Oh, you are the elder son. Oh yeah, uh, what was the question again? It doesn't make sense. But that's how the elder son is. And when he hears that his brother is back and his dad has received him, and all the music and dances to welcome the son, his brother, he is mad. Actually, he already was mad, but he's madder. <laughs> and he refuses to go out into the house. He stays out. Notice the relationship between brother and brother. It's almost like the workers. I slaughtered for you and you gave me so much. And they worked only for one hour and you give them the same amount. Worker. You remember what I'm referring yes. to? Yes. 
the vineyard, workers. <coughs> and here you have not two brothers, but two workers. If you are not convinced, notice what happens. When the father comes out, this son says to them, what does he say? How does he call his dad? Look. He doesn't say dad. He doesn't even say sir. He says, look. Very impersonal. There is no relationship there. When you call someone sister, you're not calling a name. You're naming a relationship. Hey brother, it's a relationship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A relationship. And this guy names his relationship. And what is a relationship? None. Very impersonal. <clears throat> and then he goes on to say, look, all these years I slaved for you. He's describing his identity. He's speaking about his relationship with the father. He speaks of his attitude. All these years I slaved for you. So he's calling himself actually a slave, a worker, a servant. And you didn't give me even a kid to celebrate. He's talking of wages, maybe higher wage, calculating, language of commerce, attitude of a worker, not that of a son. So you have the younger son, you have the elder son. Leave them where they are. Go to the father. There is his father waiting. Now one son is a scoundrel. <clears throat> and the other one is no son at all. Now what do I do? He's standing there, sitting down, and feeling his beard. And then he sees somebody far away. And it kicks him that it's his son, despite that shabby appearance. And what does he do? He leaves everything and runs out of the house like a mad cat. <clears throat> now my parents died when I was 40. Mom died in January 2000. Eight months later, my dad also died. But in all those 40 years of my life, I saw my dad running twice. It was immediately after a huge storm, you know what we call the cyclone. And our roof was all taken off. We were living in a thatched roof then. It was when I was growing up. I grew up in a hurricane lamp family home. Electricity came later, then, then the house became bigger, all that. And so that was the situation. And after the storm, we were still somewhere sitting inside, and my dad was clearing all these palmera leaves, you know? You know what's palmera? There's no good. And all of a sudden, I saw my dad jump up in the air, and he start, turned around and ran. And I looked to see, what made my dad jump into the air and run? And there was this guy sitting up, a huge cobra. That's the first time I saw my dad run. It was a Saturday afternoon. I hated Saturdays and Sundays.